so don't get mad, but I've been trying something new lately. No, not empathy and compassion, but uh, but digital with the Hasselblad X2D. I mean, we can totally pretend like I've never shot digital before in any of these videos, but I guess for the sake of this video, let's just roll with it. <laughs> roll. Get it? Ah, oh, this is a digital video. For a very long time, I've been churning my brain over and over again, just trying to figure out how to integrate digital into my workflow effectively. I shoot primarily film, and I've been doing so for at least as long as however long the Eras Tour is, maybe longer. Over that time, I've developed a uh, workflow for film that I'm quite happy with, and I've been producing work that I feel is pretty continuous. So where exactly does digital fit in? One can see how it might be kind of a wrench in the system, you know, with a different look and whatnot. There are certainly benefits to the medium, but I wasn't really sure if I could match the color and look of my film work. And thus, I was kind of afraid my digital work would kind of stand out from the pack when you look at my work at a larger scale, like perhaps a portfolio. So when Hasselblad first sent me the X2D and of course the 25mm lens to play around with, at first I was a little bit hesitant. I'd heard good things, of course. I mean, it's not exactly a, you know, budget camera, but at the end of the day, it's about the work produced, right? This is a medium format digital camera at the top of its class right now. It's what a lot of high-end landscape portrait and, you know, product photographers in the industry are using at the moment. So I was curious to see if I could make it work within my, I guess, faster paced run and gun style of shooting on location. Anyway, with it being a combustible 102 megapixels outside, I mean 102 degrees outside, Caleb, his wife, and me, his side piece, decided to head to the local Japanese garden for some photography. Of course, I packed along only the X2D and the XCD 25mm lens. It did feel a little weird only bringing a digital camera for once, but hey, we're exploring new horizons, like a probe. Uh, space probe, I mean. That 25mm lens is equivalent to something like a 19mm on full frame terms. I believe it's Hasselblad's newest lens for the system. And yeah, super wide on medium format is definitely a thing. This is actually a cool photo from like a technical perspective, you know, getting the lily pads silhouetted against this dark backdrop. I just used a circular polarizer to do that and it killed the reflections, which is some magical science bull I won't even ever pretend to understand. The detail when zoomed in is nice, but overall it's just not the kind of photo that I'm personally looking for. This lens does feel very premium and by that, I guess I mean heavy. I mean, I guess it does have like 200 glass elements inside of it. With the lens attached, it does kind of off balance the, uh, the weight of the camera a little bit, but hey, it do be like that sometimes. I'm sort of in a similar situation myself, and that's why I'm always like hunched over, you know? This 25 actually features a really cool way to switch between autofocus and manual focus as well. You just move this outer ring out for manual focus, and then of course in for autofocus. Oh, and you can also, you know, de-click and click, I guess, the aperture right here. This ultra wide lens did actually come in handy. Probably shouldn't be saying handy so casually in an internet video, but I do typically love shooting ultra wide on interiors and it certainly didn't let me down here. I like the shot a lot. The subject is clearly this action packed PDA that I guess I just kind of stood there watching and took a photo of because I don't know what's wrong with me. But the lens was wide enough to capture the environment effectively. An interesting backdrop and you know, it helps that the lighting was pretty solid. This lens is undoubtedly stupid sharp and to have f2.5 on a medium format lens that is this wide is definitely a game changer. It does seem to bellow out a little and have some, you know, lens distortion, which is easily fixable. And then of course it has a tiny bit of a uh, lens coma towards the edges, but only when you're wide open, it goes away pretty quick when you, uh, when you close down, you can even get really close and use that F 2.5 for all it's worth to get this kind of weird mix mash of ultra wide angle, but shallow depth of field, medium format look like you're an artsy ass Emmanuel Lebesky or something. There is so much bird shit on this rock. What did a bird do? Shit its pants? 
and then explode. Lenses are cool and all, but what about the camera itself? There's actually a lot to cover here, so let's go back out into the field, literally a field, and see truly what this expensive machine is capable of. The story behind, I guess, all this was that it was actually date night for Monica and I. So I thought about it, and I decided to take her to the most romantic place I could think of. That's right, a Taco Bell cantina on the beach, about five hours away, so I could do photography on the way, and you know, she could watch me, her favorite way to pass the time. Of course, our dog Baxter had to third wheel as well because I don't know. It's his world, more just in the way. First location was this farm next to some train tracks that featured this building. I'm not super sure what it was or is. There was definitely some big ass birds inside it, either fighting or I don't know, fucking. Anyway, I found the first photo. The lighting wasn't exactly what I had in mind, but you know, whatever. At least I was having a really good day that day. Oh. Please don't tell me that's really expensive. For these shots, I actually decided to swap out the 25mm lens for the X-Pan 45mm lens that I have. Still pretty wide, but more of like a standard 35mm in full frame terms. The X2D has two shutter mechanisms built in. If you use a native lens like this 25 millimeter lens, you can use the leaf shutter that is built into the lens, which is probably the preferred method because it allows for, you know, crazy high uh, flash sync, but also I think it's supposed to yield better dynamic range overall. The other option is the classic electronic shutter, which I used here because the X-Pan 45 doesn't have an inbuilt leaf shutter. Admittedly though, I still found the dynamic range to be quite impressive. I never ran into any issues with it. The feel of this camera is about, you know, as solid as it comes. The hand grip here is just like pure perfection. The body here is made of aluminum or aluminum if you like to pronounce things wrong. And it just feels very, I don't know, sharp and sleek to the touch. One of the best feeling cameras I've ever fondled semi-photo erotically. Anyway, whilst out there dodging, you know, the bombers who definitely like to aim at expensive cameras, I somehow took this shot and dare I say it, it may just be portfolio, baby. The lighting, the colors, the subject, well, they all just work pretty well. Like I said, everything on this camera just feels premium. The screen on the back even feels gigantic as well. I still have the screen protector on, so just ignore that. I mean, at the end of the day, you're working with a big ass medium format sensor. It only makes some sort of sense to have a gigantic screen to display your photos on, which yeah, I guess ironically, I just leave turned off most of the time. This screen is a touch screen, so you can change whatever settings you, know, you need to. And the interface is incredibly simplified for someone like me who's just now emerging into the digital world of you know photography. I mean, it's real simple. You know, just basic settings, no extra fluff, no goofing around with like video or dating apps, stories, or I don't know, there's no Postmates on this. Here along the PCH, I took some absolute favorites of mine. I hiked into the scene with both the, you know, 25 and 45, just in case. And right off the bat, I shot this beauty. Another romantic. PDA sesh. Seems like love's in the air in this video. Gross. Good layering, you know, good colors, good composition. I mean, it's all there. And at this point, I started wondering if I was just getting lucky with these shots or perhaps it was somehow the camera. The camera somehow, some way made me see composition better. It made me be a little bit more intentional. It could also help that this camera produces a monstrous 102 megapixel image. I mean, what are you even supposed to do with all that information? My computer nearly lit itself on fire trying to process it. I guess the answer is about as simple as whatever you want. It's digital. I would say the biggest advantage is, you know, if your composition or your focal length didn't really hit the mark in the moment, you have uh, plenty of room in post to, you know, fix it up. And that's kind of a nice cushion to have. Anyway, with Baxter performing the sit of the century and these two basically flirting and falling in love on the beach because, you know, romance or whatever. I shot this. Another solid photo. Shit. Maybe there is something to this digital photography thing after all. I seem to be on my game quite a bit, which is completely unprecedented for this channel. I 
Eventually I switched over to the 25 mil again and shot some cool coastal landscapes, one with a tiny human for scale. I'm sure they're actually a regular sized human, but they just, you know, look small in the photo. The thing with digital that has always turned me off was the digital look, that kind of like over sharpened artifacty look. I'm not sure I can describe it well enough, but some cameras, they definitely have it. Perhaps one of the things that interested me in the X2D is that a lot of people in the photosphere have said that the X2D sensor has sort of a film-like textural rendering. While I would maybe 20% agree with that, I do think the sensor does do something kind of special. It's not over sharpened or you know scaled up. It, it produces a very natural and pleasing look. If we zoom into the shore here on this photo, the waves almost feel kind of painted. I can't quite put my finger on it literally because it's not a physical format, it's digital, but more it just feels soft and pleasant. Like I said before, one of the issues I was afraid of was matching the look of the digital to my work on color film. And I think using a sensor that renders imagery very natural was a good place to start. I shoot mostly Kodak Ektachrome these days, and I knew I wouldn't exactly get a you know one-to-one -one match on color science or anything like that. But I wanted something that would work congruently with my main work on film. So I basically just modeled the preset in Lightroom to get me in the ballpark kind of right off the bat. The color science of this sensor of this camera is another thing I've heard being lauded by uh, by photographers. I never really understood the color science argument on digital cameras because most people just apply presets on top of their raw photos, which kind of washes away any like baseline color anyway. But I do suppose the better place you start from color wise, the easier it is to, you know, finish a photo. Speaking of color science and presets, holy I like this shot. I obviously did paint out the graffiti because it was very distracting to what I thought was an otherwise beautiful photo. And yeah, of course I am in the rival gang to this tag, but yeah, this is likely a portfolio shot. Anyway, with Monica getting the perfect shot of Baxter's bunghole for some reason, we cruised up the coast to our final resting place for the evening. We didn't, you know, die there. One cool trick this camera has up its sleeve is sensor stabilization, which you won't find on any film camera. Oh man, who have I become? Anyway, I kept the ISO pretty low for the whole day and was using a heavy warming filter which reduced the light by about a stop. It's actually kind of remarkable. I was at like half of a second for some of these. I certainly wouldn't have been able to get this shot without it. Definitely one of my favorites. It's just so moody, you know, so haunted looking, which is crazy because that's the motel we were staying at. There you go, you have to be the like first one. Speaking of mood, the toilet was kind of one, and you already know what I had to do. I also shot these, which, yeah, the colors on this one are quite good. So that's pre-Taco Bell. See how it looks on the other side. Anyway, with the one terabyte internal storage on my camera filling up, it was time for us to fill up our own bowels with the promised beach Taco Bell, a seaside siren at the end of a long voyage beckoning us towards it only to betray us later in, you know, classic Taco Bell fashion. It's the most goddamn beautiful thing I've ever seen. There she is. This is what we drove six hours for. Anyway, with Monica paying for dinner because it's 2024 and I don't know, equality or something, Baxter finally experienced what true fine dining was all about as he watched in horror as we ate our food and didn't give him any. Okay, we gave him a little. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> 
<laughs> God damn, that's strong. This place is heaven on earth. Now, Taco Bell hungover, we packed up the room and went to grab coffee before we hit the road for like five hours. It was here that I took probably the best photo of the trip. No, definitely not that one. This one, actually, on the 25 mil. Compositionally, it's all there. You know, good layering, good colors, framing within framing. It's just a culmination of everything that makes this camera and lens as good as it is. But it all comes at a cost literally, financially. It doesn't have like an ancient pirate curse on it or anything. Is this camera worth the price tag? I think it depends on what you're shooting, you know, what you're after, but yeah, ultimately, I think if you have the coin, then this camera will not disappoint you most likely. Like I said, it's a very solid machine. It feels good in the hand and good to use. Maybe because each one of these is, you know, hand built. I know that because it's a digital camera with a lot of storage on board, I could easily just rip you know, several alternates of every angle that I took, but I just wasn't really doing that. I was uh, much more, I guess, considerate of the scene, you know, to find the angle, find the romance before I, you know, ultimately lifted the camera up to my enormous head. And yeah, that doesn't negate the fact that you can apply this sense of intention or meaning to any camera you use, but for some reason with the X2D, it just really instills it. Perhaps that could be in part due to my film photography background or it could be that this camera is just streamlined for photography. Like I said before, there's no video settings on this. It's not a hybrid camera. Photography is the goal here. And at the end of the day, it is kind of nice to be using a camera that focuses solely on photography and then, you know, produces an image that backs it up. Maybe that's why I walked away from this whole experience with some photos that I consider to be quite good. Or maybe it's just because I played the role of, you know, starving artist all day until I quenched my hunger with Taco Bell, which then, you know, afterwards the role switched to splatter painting.